Hey, what's up guys? Nadia and Sands here for another very exciting episode of Learn How to Edit Stuff. Today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be showing you guys the new replay system that just came out for Fortnite. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, I don't have to explain to you what Fortnite is, so you already know that part. But the new replay system, which just came out a couple days ago, is super powerful. People are making awesome game cinematics, and if you're curious on how to do that, hopefully this video will shed a little bit of light on that for you today. This video is meant to just be a basic walkthrough of the user interface, the different camera modes, and kind of how to operate inside of the game so that you can capture your own game cinematics. So open up Fortnite, because we're getting started. All right, guys, jumping in here using the replay system is pretty easy. Step one is playing a game of Fortnite, and then step two, after you're done playing, is coming up here to career and going to replays, and all of your games will be saved here in the replays folder. Now, I only have one played on 414, uh, five minutes and 12 seconds in the game. I finished 35th out of 98, and I got four eliminations. So it'll tell you some information here. So if you're going for like a high kill game, all of your eliminations will be listed here, and the length and your first place finish. And if you wanted to rename this, it's very simple. You just click on it, come down to rename and save, and you can call it whatever and you hit confirm and it will rename the file here now it is saving it locally on your computer it doesn't take up too much space very low file sizes so don't worry about running on a hard drive space or anything like that let's jump back in click on the replay come down here to the play button hit play and confirm it will load you up into the game queue from the very beginning so if you guys wanted to you know do a goofy cinematic of people dancing with each other or whatever you can still do whatever you want in the game queue but i'm assuming that most of you will want to actually capture your gameplay so i'm going to fast forward it to that part right now all right let's check out the ui real quick starting from the bottom left you see this eyeball icon and that will actually hide the hud and if you want to get that back all you have to do is hit escape twice i'm assuming epic will change that later but for now you have to hit escape twice uh, the next icon over is the camera icon button uh, we have a couple of different options here auto exposure on or off if you turn it off you can underexpose or overexpose your gameplay a little bit underexposed will make it more you know sunsetty and a little bit more overexposed make it look a little bit more like morning time i like to keep auto exposure on because it's easier to deal with and then right underneath that, we have the f-stop, the focal length, and autofocus for the lens. Now, this is really easy to navigate once you have a higher focal length. So I'm actually going to go ahead and switch this to, uh, let's say, 100 millimeters now. You'll notice that if I start switching this f-stop around, the lower I go, the more blurry the background gets, and the more, like, digital distortion noise is happening. I'm assuming Epic will fix that as well. This is first gen of the replay file system, so there are a lot of bugs. Don't get frustrated. This is, like, beta, basically. So I'm assuming they'll add way more features down the road, but this is just a basic introduction to the replay system and how to kind of work it and get some cool cinematics so don't get frustrated so i'm at f2 and 100 millimeters and if i actually go up to f22 you'll see that everything in the background is in focus versus a lower f-stop everything will be blurred except for your character and then we go on to autofocus if you turn autofocus off you will be able to pick and choose what is in focus by sliding down here on the bottom it is a little bit clunky but it's kind of cool if you want to do any rack focuses or anything like that and then coming over to this camera icon down here, we can turn nameplates on and off for all the characters, player outlines, replay region, damage effects, auto follow, distance to subject, and high quality effects. I like to keep high quality effects on and damage effects also on just to give your video a little bit more spunk. Moving down here to the play controls, this button over here will go all the way back to the beginning of the replay. This will go back 15 seconds. This will play it. This will go forward 15 seconds, and this will go to the very end of the replay, very similar to what you're seeing on pretty much any device that plays any media ever. So that should be pretty clear. Right next to that is the speed at which the replay plays. Now, a lot of replay clients will only go down to like 0.25 speed, uh, but Fortnite, God bless the game developers, have actually allowed you to go down to 0.1x speed. So if I play this, it is very slow and it is very awesome, and a lot of replay systems don't actually allow you to do that, but this controls your replay speed. Right next to that, you can focus on certain characters, so if you guys are squatting up, you can quickly go to other parts of your squad, and you can kind of see what they're up to. I did a solo game, so this isn't going to affect me, but if I wanted to, you know, very simply follow the guy that I'm killing, I can find him down here, and then I can use the camera controls, which is the next thing I want to cover. Now, if you click on this, there are a lot of different options. Third person will actually allow you to rotate the camera around your subject, and if you hit play while you're recording, you can actually just kind of spin it uh, in 360 around him, uh, but the WASD keys will not work. So third person kind of only gives you camera rotation control, whereas some of the other controls give you a lot more freedom. So next one is drone follow, and basically what this will allow you to do is position the camera, uh, Q and E guys on the keyboard will allow you to go up and down. So Q gets you lower to the ground and E gets you higher up in the air. And what drone follow will do is it will actually follow your character from the air. You can use the WASD keys to kind of spin around your subject here. And I apologize if there's any frame lag, my computer's doing a lot right now, but you can use the WASD keys to kind of zoom around the outside of your subject. You can also zoom in at the same time and it will allow you to kind of rotate freely around your character. 
drone attach is uh, a little bit different where you can actually free position the camera and wherever the camera ends up going, if you hit play, it will just attach itself to your character. So it will follow it exactly along with the character movement. You can do the same thing like this where you can kind of do a top down shot and if you hit play, it will follow your character exactly uh, as it moves. So that's kind of a cool one. What I think everybody's most excited about is the drone free cam. And basically what this allows you to do is free roam the camera anywhere around the map and get really, really cool and interesting angles of kills and of people jumping through things and, and all that stuff. So scrolling up on your scroll wheel will actually move the camera focal length in and out. So if I wanted to get a nice like, you know, 85 mil shot here of me about to cap this guy, uh, I can do that from here. And if I turn autofocus off, I can tell the camera where to focus. So I wanna focus right on the barrel of the gun, just like so. And then if I come down here and hide the HUD and then play this, I can start capturing very beautiful scenes. Uh, don't mind the mouse pointer here because you can actually turn that off in OBS. But I can start capturing beautiful scenes in cinematic kind of quality. And I have complete control over what the camera's doing at all times. One other quick thing, guys, if you hit a plus or minus on your keyboard, uh, you can actually change the speed at which the camera moves. I know that it's not like directly written on the UI, but plus and minus will allow you to go faster and slower with the camera. So if you wanted to do any super hectic camera movements or nice kind of slow camera movements across things, you can change it with plus and minus. And last but not least is the gameplay camera function, which it will actually play the game back exactly as you saw it and as you played it. If you wanted to just go back in and re-record your game afterwards, this is probably the easiest way to do it and just hide the UI and it will show you everything you did in real time exactly as you remember playing. So definitely go around and explore and play with all of the functions of the replay system. It is super fun and you can do some really, really cool stuff with it. So I hope this video was helpful to some of you out there. Now you will need a pretty beefy PC in order to run everything at epic quality and also run OBS at the same time. So if you guys are running something that you're not really sure about, get prepared for a lot of crashes and a lot of frustration. But if you record one shot at a time, you can piece together something really cool and really cinematic to kind of highlight your game in Fortnite. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't normally do things like this. I do more traditional editing tutorials, as you know, but Fortnite is a great game and the replay system is super cool and I'm super into it. So I figured, hey, why not just capitalize on this new replay system and show you guys a little bit more on how to use it. So go out, make some awesome cinematic gameplay. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.